Oh, so his dad is that cop. It's the same guy. Oh, so that's how Tesu got the EMP. Makes so much sense now. Oh my god. Dude, did Sigma just say that? <laughs> Sigma just said all oh, this fuss over one death. How, how would they react when there's 50 million? Oh my god. This guy is sadistic. First off, before I start talking about the episode, we got to see a young Sohe. Now her dad is that cop that worked with Hyungi. It is the same guy. I remember someone commented on that and I was thinking, whoa, I never even thought of that. And yeah, come to find out, it is the same guy. It's the cop. Now we knew that there was a young Sohe, but we just didn't know where she was at. As of right now, we still don't know where she's living, but we know that she exists. And, um, wait, she said that she was born in 2012. So she's like eight, nine years old. And they get married in the future. How old is Taesu in the future when she's old enough to get married? You know what? I'm not going to go there. You know, people can marry who who uh, they want to marry. But anyway, this drama just keeps getting better and better and I am enjoying the entire ride so far. I mean, there is not one boring moment in this drama. Like, there is not one boring scene in this drama. Like, every scene counts in the storyline. Real quick, if, if you know anyone who enjoys Korean dramas but they have not started watching this drama, let them know, let them catch up, let them... You know, well, force it on them because <laughs> this drama is just so, so good. And the way that they're telling the storyline is so good. Like when it comes to time traveling, it can be confusing, you know, because there are certain theories that uh, time traveling is. Um, there are certain things that you must follow when it comes to time traveling. But sometimes for TV shows or for movies, they want to switch it up a bit and it might throw you off. And. When it throws you off, it might throw you off from the storyline and you might get confused. But but for this, you're not confused at all. It's straightforward and they're not trying to confuse you. The only thing they're trying to do is entertain you and shock you. And they're doing a pretty, pretty good job at it. So for this episode, now I don't want to call it a flashback episode. Even though for us viewers, it's almost like we're seeing a flashback because this happened because of that and that happened because of this. I see it as an event occurred during when Tae was knocked out and uh, being trapped in his own house. So at the beginning of the episode, we see Soe waking up at Jason's house. She got shot in the leg by Hyungi, and we pretty much see Jason's journey on winning the lottery. So right after Soe left him at the train station, he resented her, and then he found out that she left him the lottery ticket, and he won it big. Right after chilling at the poolside. Um, he felt that something was wrong, so he went to Taesu's house. No one was there, so he waited. And come to find out, he was there when Taesu and Soe was trying to sneak in back into Taesu's house. And if you guys don't remember that episode, it was the episode where Eddie Kim was uh, in front of the closet where Sohe and Taesu was hiding in. So it was during that episode, which was pretty interesting. And it does make sense how how Jason knew that. Sohe was at Eddie Kim's party. He followed her. And then Sohe went to the Asia market, tried to make a deal with CEO Park um, in exchange for the key that he wanted. So what she wanted was one, uh, help Jason and his family leave the country because the control barrel was going after her. And two, get in touch with Taesu and help him escape his own house, which he did. And it makes sense how Taesu got the EMP in his own house. When I saw that in the last episode, I was thinking, wait a minute, didn't he make just one EMP? How did that end up in his house? That makes sense on how he got it. And after he escaped, yeah, uh, Taesu was running away from some goons and they got sniped. And we know how uh, uh, Sohe was there and how she knew that he was there because, yeah, they followed him <laughs> pretty much. So right after Jason picked up Taesu, what's funny is that Jason and Taesu were bickering in the car about the car being secondhand. Um, it's cold. Uh, to me, for now, I think it's pretty funny. 
But if this keeps going on constantly, I feel like it's going to be just a little bit annoying. But for now, it is a little bit funny. And it's pretty obvious that Jason has a, has a little bit of crush on Soe. And he is jealous that Soe does like Tesu. And now we're at the Asia market. CEO Park got the key. He was trying to open the safe, which was pretty disgusting when he put the key in his mouth. Uh, yeah, that's like, ooh, that's really disgusting. Like, how many locations and hands have been exchanged, you know, with the key, you know? It's like, again, pretty, pretty nasty that he put it in his mouth. But anyway, um, so as he was trying to put the key to unlock the safe, Sohei was thinking, wait a minute, if I was your brother Taesan, I wouldn't put the put something so important, the blueprint to the uploader that Taesul was going to invent. I'm not going to put something that important in a safe. So she was right. The blueprint, the, blah, blah, <laughs> the blueprint was definitely with Taesan the, the entire time. So when CEO Park opened the safe, there was a letter to Taesul saying that, hey, if you're reading this, it means that you open the safe, the blueprint is with me, and I'm okay. Also, in the letter, Taesan also said, um, I know who Sigma is. And all of the pictures that um all of the pictures that was in the camera that Taesu found in the suitcase, it wasn't Taesan trying to uh protect uh well, I mean his intention is to protect Taesu, but it wasn't to follow him. It was to find Sigma, and of course he found Sigma. And then right after leaving the Asia market, Taesul and Sohe went to go meet up with Hanyong, which Sohe has her sniper gun, pointed a red dot at Hanyong while Taesul wanted to have a conversation with him. And he asked him who is Sigma? Where is he at? And Hanyong gave him the story on how did uh, Sigma became their investor. And it was because Sigma had the medicine for his wife. And his wife is pretty ill. So because Sigma had the medicine and Sigma insisted on becoming an investor, of course Han Young is going to say yes because Sigma saved his wife's life. So if I was him, like, I wouldn't blame him, you know? Because, like, you want to repay back the person who saved your loved one's life. So, again, I don't blame him. Then at the last scene... We see Tesu in front of reporters with cameras and he says, well, to his brother, I missed you. But to Sigma, he says that I'm going to find you. Now, I don't know if he's going to kill him, but I mean, I'm pretty, well, it makes sense if, if Tesu does. I mean, Sigma is trying to kill Tesu. So the only one way to fight back is to retaliate and try to kill him. But yeah, he will find him. And then we see Sigma watching. And wait, hold up. The actor who is portraying Sigma, that's definitely the same actor I saw in Descendants of the Sun and what was that one drama? The one with Goblin. There we go. Yeah, he played. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same actor. I love him. Yeah, he is a phenomenal actor. And just to see him play a bad guy again, like he is so good playing the bad guy. And I'm so excited on how he's going to portray Sigma and how the writers are writing this character. It's so exciting. And then right after that scene, we see Han Yong right next to his wife who was in bed and looked really ill and it looks like she's about to pass. And then he says, um, Yobo, I'm sorry. I was so incompetent. And then we see him in his office pulling out a gun, pointing the gun in his mouth and then he shot himself as soon as his wife died too because, well, first, looking at the machine, there wasn't no deet, deet, deet. It was all straight lines. So I'm assuming as soon as she passed, he also shot himself. And then there was a funeral for his death. And then Sigma came out of nowhere and said, all this fuss because of one death. What would they do if it was 50 million? I'm like, oh my God, this guy is already evil. Like... This is our second time seeing Sigma, but it's our first time. Wait, no, 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 no. He had lines in the last episode. Well, even though that this is our second time seeing him, we already know how evil and 
badass this guy is and badass i mean in a bad way like a bad guy way but yeah it's like damn this guy i'm predicting this guy is going to be very sadistic and if he is damn that's that's all i can say so yeah that's the gist of the review if there's anything i might have missed please leave it in the comments below uh man this episode was just really really good and it was a nice change of pace because all of the previous episodes it was more of events move forward events move forward for this one it, it was a nice change of pace is more of let's move forward a little bit but then let's let's do a little of uh the backtracking you know what i mean so yeah it was a nice change of pace so anyway if you guys enjoyed this review leave a like comment down below and subscribe see ya